Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. So in this video, I wanted to look at one of the worst uh, declines in recent memory, and that was the decline in the stock market between 2007 and 2009. So on the screen, you see the S&P 500 chart, and I'm using the ETF uh, SPY here as a proxy. So you can see um, sometime in October of 2007, the S&P 500 peaked at about 155 and then it collapsed all the way down to about 70 so almost uh, you know it was about a 50% plus uh, this decline basically so there will be another 50% decline I'm pretty sure of that and so what I wanted to look at in this video is the worst case scenario the kind of mentality we need to have and you know how we can you know prepare for that kind of decline so I'm going to zoom in on this period in a short while but before we do that I wanted to show you what uh, Charlie Munger has to say about a 50% decline so this clip is about a minute long and so let's take a look by the decline in the share price of Berkshire Hathaway the difficult zero this is the third time that Warren and I have seen our holdings in Berkshire go down top tick to bottom tick by 50% I think, I think it's, it's the, the nature of long-term shareholding with the normal vicissitudes and, and the worldly outcomes and in markets, markets that the, the long-term holder has his quoted value, value of stock go down, down and then by, by say 50%. In fact, you can argue, argue that if you're not willing to react with equanimity to a market price decline of 50% two or three times a century. You're, you're not fit to be a common shareholder and you deserve the mediocre result you're going to get. Compared to the people who do have the temperament who can be more philosophical about these market fluctuations. So let's pause the video over there. So this was the decline that Charlie Munger was referring to. So you know, in 2007 and 2008, the market declined over 50%. You can see a graph of that on the screen. So like I mentioned, it went from about 155 to all the way down to well, even 68 here. But what I wanted to look at was how long it took for the market to recover. So you can see here that it took about... Uh, so it hit a peak on about the 1st October 2007. And about 1st of April 2013, the market recovered. So it took about 5.5 years basically for the market to recover. So you have to be prepared for that. So for those 5.5 years, basically the market went nowhere. And if you had invested right at the peak, you would have, uh, it would have taken 5.5 years to just break even. Let's look at a stock as well that went through that phase. And one of my favorite stocks is Alphabet. And so Alphabet also went through a 50% plus decline during that market uh, crash. So you can see here it was about 355. And then it went all the way down to about right at the bottom here, about 145. So more than 50% decline. Let's zoom in on that period a bit more. So, you can see here that uh, Alphabet reached a peak during that period of about, let's say, $359. And it went all the way down to about $128. And then it went back up to $359. But how long did it take to get back to break even? Um, so, it took about less than 5 years compared to the S&P 500. So Alphabet, I think, is a slightly higher quality holding than the S&P 500. So it took a bit uh, less time to break even. Let's look at the worst case scenario if you had invested right at the peak and you're held all the way up to now. So as we saw, the S&P 500 well, had a peak of about 150 uh, plus thereabouts. And right now, or at least a few weeks ago, it was about $300. And so if you held it for those 12 years right from the peak all the way to today, um, you would have 
got a compound annual growth rate of about 5.95%. And this is a MoneyChim calculator, which you can find on the website moneychim.com. So anyway, this uh, return is not too bad of a return, right? It's still be much better than leaving it uh, in the bank account. But of course, if you had not had the patience and you had sold off or if you were, you know, uh, trading in and out, you may not have achieved this and you may have achieved quite bad returns actually. So I did a video of why I think buy and hold is still the best way to go. And it served me well so far this year as well. And then in that video, I also talked about, uh, and I referenced some articles where every single market declined the S&P 500 seen uh, over the last, you know, decades um, has been erased basically. And the market has broken even from the peak to the, back to this peak and has, and has powered on even to higher peaks. I also did a video about, you know, how you would want to prepare yourself if you do see that there is a potential for a market crash. And in this video, I talk about how owning stocks like McDonald's or Colgate or Clorox uh, almost provide bond-like returns, but a bit better returns than the bonds. So you may want to check out that video as well. Finally, I want to leave us with this quote from Warren Buffett, right? Opportunities come infrequently. When it rains, gold put out the bucket, not the timber. So if there is a 50% decline, I know that's going to cause a lot of short-term pain. But remember, uh, I mean, that could be a great buying opportunity. So how I do this is I basically stay invested about 80-90% or most of the time. And so I have about 10-20% to of cash that I'm willing to, you know, deploy into the market if there is a 50% um, decline. And then I also have an emergency fund and I'm willing to tap into the emergency fund if there is a 50% decline as well. So I think I'm prepared for that 50% decline. Uh, I hope you are prepared as well. Thank you for watching this video. Please like and subscribe and share and comment with your views on how you would handle a 50% decline. Thank you and see you in the next video.